do 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 Welcome to Domains 21. This is a, another session, and I am extremely happy to welcome Lee Scour Bissett from Georgetown University and Marie Savanandin, who has been doing domains. And I think, Marie, you've been at every domains conference so far. So you're kind of like a, a three star <laughs> attendee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> so welcome back. They'll be talking to us about Beyond Portfolios. Uh, topic near and dear to my heart in terms of what's possible and high impact programmatic uses of domains at Georgetown University. So I will not dither on and I will let them get down to work. Excellent. Thank you, Jim. Um, so welcome to our um, presentation on Beyond Portfolios, high impact programmatic uses of domains at Georgetown. And um, just a very brief introduction of Lee and myself and what we do at Georgetown. Um, I'm Marie Salvanaden. I'm the Senior Associate Director for uh, Digital Learning and Web Development. Um, and Lee, do you wanna? Sure, I'm Lee scaladar up -Bissett, and I'm a Learning Design Specialist uh, at Candles, which is the Center for New Designs in Learning and Scholarship at Georgetown University. So what we're going to talk about today is um, high impact practices. And this was identified by the AAUP as um, uh, pedagogical practices that have a high impact on student learning and how important they are. So um, one of the most recent uh, high impact practices that was added was, in fact, uh, e-portfolios um as uh as a high the aac and you sorry um so as you can see here we know what uh how important portfolios and now e-portfolios are for student learning it gives an integrated experience um it allows students to see the connections in their work as they've gone through um and georgetown has long been uh practicing not just e-portfolios but portfolio portfolios in general as a good educational practice. And Georgetown Domains is often used um, as a kind of Trojan horse for um, or e-portfolios or Trojan horse, I, Trojan horse, I should say, for introducing the domain in one's own program, that we want something flexible. We want something uh, that students can help share their work more publicly. It gets it out of locked down and proprietary e-portfolio systems that are more templates than they are the opportunity to be creative. But there are more high impact practices that domains can help um, faculty and programs uh, adapt into the pedagogy. And so what we wanted to focus on today is uh, some programs that have the ePortfolio, but how um, domains, the ePortfolio through domains also allows for other high impact practices that take place in uh, the classroom, such as collaborative assignments and projects, service learning and community-based learning, capstone courses and projects, and the formation of learning communities. And these are just some of the examples um, that we're going to be looking at for um, programs across Georgetown University that have adopted Domain of One's Own. One of the first programs uh, that we were going to focus on is a master's degree in learning design and technology. Um, I will, uh, for in full transparency, I teach in the program. I actually teach the design studio in portfolio and digital identity. Um, but what's so great about that particular class is that I get to see a wide selection of the work that the students do across their classes and help them see the integrative nature of all of these various projects, but also encourage them to think more broadly about the work that they do outside of the program and how they can bring that into their portfolios. And so here are some examples from students and the work that they've done on their domains uh, and what it has allowed them to be able to do with their domains. So as I said, um, you know, they have an e-portfolio requirement instead of a capstone or a thesis, and the program largely uses project-based learning um, with their projects hosted uh, on domains. 
So one of the one of the great classes that we offer is a, a class called Emergent Technology, and that's taught by uh, Brian Alexander. And this first project that I wanted to share is one by Anne Dumanet, and she designed a game in Twine hosted on her domain. Um, this is as well, she did it that it was focused not only on the English language um, or students in the United States, but students in the Philippines. Um, and so really she was able to design this game, host it on domains and be able to produce it to an international audience um, in, in, that, in her design for it. You can see the um, link at the, bottom of the, at the bottom of the page. Um, and I'll make sure to share all of these links as well for what we're checking out. Now, it's not just in classes, though, that our students are doing this great work. Um, there is also extracurricular projects that these students are developing. Often they work um, either full time or part time. Um, and so they have the opportunity to, to apply what they've learned in their classes in their day to day jobs and come up with really amazing projects that then they can feature and um, and promote even on their on their domains. And it allows for this kind of work to gain visibility, but also to be able to, again, integrate it into their learning. So Ijeoma Nijaka, uh, she curated a, uh, she's a recent graduate, she now works at the Red House, um, and she curated an entire exhibit that then she was able to put highlights up um, on her site, Invisibility at Georgetown, Past, Present, and Future. She's very um, interested in uh, inclusion and inclusivity, especially for the Georgetown community. And she was able to make visual that and bring in, um, bring in the voices of multiple people and have this really fantastic project live on beyond the short um, exhibit time that existed where it's allowed to exist for a longer period of time on her domain. Another example of this is uh, the student Sandy Lee, where uh, she participated in a summer institute called uh, Equity in the Academic Experience. Um, this was again, extracurricular, but nonetheless, she was able to put her, narrate her experience and share their final project and report on their, on her domain, um, allowing for it to have a larger impact than just um, Georgetown University, but again, sharing beyond that and able to then also include it into her portfolio and show the work that, show the applicability of the work that she was doing in the learning design and technology program. So these are all great examples of students using domains in various ways, both curricular and extracurricular to um, showcase the project-based, community-based learning that they have done. Our next program that we wanna look at is the MA in Public Relations and Corporate Communications. This is a program offered through our School of Continuing Studies. It is currently in the process of being in, um, moved entirely online. Uh, even pre-pandemic, we were developing these courses uh, online. And so one per course in particular um, we're gonna talk about, but. Of course, public relations is a uh, outward facing profession. And so domains allows for um, allows for the students to uh, experiment with this kind of public facing work, but also this opportunity in a all online asynchronous format to be able to still build community and uh, hopefully for real world impact as well. So the course is public affairs, and I worked with uh, the instructor, Wendy Fila. She's a professional in the field uh, and the subject matter expert and who teaches this class, and we developed the online version of this class. So the assignment that uses domains is that students from the very beginning choose a pet cause to apply what they have learned that week, um, which they then write about on the blog. At the beginning of the course as well, the students participate in a, in a value sort. They're required to comment on each other's posts that have different sets of values. So in other words, how would you convince somebody who has a different set of values than you to endorse um, your pet cause? And what uh, Professor Files notes is that the blogs were amazing for community building, for student engagement, and provided a platform for what the students were passionate about. So we see this kind of project-based learning, um, student-driven learning, where they're choosing what they're passionate about. Um, 
as well as an opportunity for the students to get to know each other better, comment on each other's posts. Um, you know, what, what we hope blogs can and should be is this opportunity to engage and engage with people with um, admittedly different, uh, as I say, values. And how do you learn from that? How do you, how do you engage? And so it, it turned out to be a really, really successful um, pilot that she tried and is now continuing on. Um, and she's planning on using it every semester moving forward. So with that, I will uh, pass it on to Marie to talk a little bit more about how domains are being used. Thank you, Lee. So the next set of examples we're gonna look at are all um, undergraduate focused. Um, so this first one, is a course called Flourishing in College and Community. And the instructor for the course is Professor St uh, Sarah Stiles. And the course is uh, entirely focused on student well being. Um, there's a lot of research um, talking about, uh, even before the pandemic, um, the, the stress that uh, students go through as they learn how to navigate college and as, those, as they're sort of progressing um, through their academic career. So the, the course is um, for freshmen and sophomore. Uh, I think it's mostly that freshmen that enroll in the course, uh, but a support system created as well. They have peer mentors, and they're really encouraged to think about well-being, put in, um, put in place practices, um, and reflect on the journey they've had so far, and then how would they like to progress um, from that point on. Now, where domains comes in, uh, Lee, if you want to move to the next slide, is um, students are encouraged to actually create a public website um, to ha have them reflect about this uh, very, you know, most of the time, very personal stories about challenges that they've had in the past, things that they're working through at Georgetown. So you can sort of get a sense of um, some of the um, challenges that um, students go through. Now domains, you know, sort of outside of the e-portfolio approach here, it really encourages students to think about um, online presence. Uh, how are you talking about these challenges in a reflective way and how are you connecting to your audience? So you're thinking about your content, you're thinking about digital presence and crafting that narrative while, while also sort of grappling, grasping and working through well-being as an overall, um, overall sort of um you know thing that you're working on um for your life right so it's very it's been very uh, neat to kind of see domains being used for this kind of um personal space within um within a university environment um so then our next example is um the digital rome project um which is actually a study abroad um experience back in the day when study abroad used to be possible and here's hoping we can get back there very soon um but if you want to advance to the next slide Lee, um lee sorry um the project itself is um as so students go to rome and they go and visit several museum sites um archaeological sites um and then they document, take pictures, so they use uh, domains. And the specific um, instance is actually an Omeka site where you know they're easily able to get access to Omeka without having to go through the process of setting something up, figuring out is this the right uh, installation process, et cetera, right? Um, the professors and the students are just focused on the sort of problem that they're looking to solve, which is we want to create a digital library we want it to be able, we want to be able to co-create this place we want to be able to reflect on each other's work and then sort of um augment leverage each other's research as well so this pro this has provided like a collection uh, of all of the assets that different students are um, um sort of taking pictures of documenting etc and then as they sort of deliver their final exhibits and that is the other thing instead of writing a paper students are encouraged to actually create a digital narrative around what they're seeing, what they're learning, and what they're giving back um, to their peers in this learning community. So I wanted to sort of wrap this up with a quote from uh, the professor. Um, Overall, students certainly engage more than they do in writing papers with the visual evidence. And since this is a major component of this class, we count this as a definite benefit. Uh, and we, you know, sort of anecdotally from the faculty just heard 
how much more engaged students were um, in sort of changing some of the dynamics of, you know, here's a kind of final paper about my summer abroad experience to here's a very tangible resource that me and my classmates or my teammates created that now others can look at and also use, right? Like that's the other thing you're sort of giving back to this larger community. So uh, with that, we would like to wrap up our session. You know, thank you so much for uh, your time and listening to our um, presentation. And we look forward to engaging with all of you in the discussion. Yes, thank you, everyone. Jim, you're still muted. Luckily, I can cut that out. So, I want to I thank you both for uh, for joining us. And you know, I'm interested. We've been talking a lot. You talked about the the notion of the Trojan horse portfolios opening up. Just the idea that like you have a tool like Omega to do archiving of a project in Rome, or you have a platform where something like Twine can be built. And I think in some ways it's as simple as providing your community web tools to build some of the ideas that they discuss, right? Like, I don't think domains is as, I like that you talk about it as a programmatic, but also a practical approach to putting tools and possibilities in the hands of your community. And so how has that worked? I mean, has it been a hard sell or has it just been natural given that, you know, these are things that a lot of your faculty, whether it's Brian Alexander or whoever, might see the value of like already. It's not something where you have to beat down doors, I imagine, but am I wrong? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's been a very organic uh, growth at Georgetown. And, you know, we started with, and also we I should sort of just stepping back a little bit there. Uh, we have a huge blogging system as well. So there's a lot of buy-in into that uh, opportunity to give students to um, be themselves like in a public space, be able to theme things, um, engage with each other differently. And then when we introduce domains, you know, like you said, it opens up a plethora of options without having to sort of um, engage with different groups of people, bringing in different kinds of expertise, all at the systems level. You know, at that point, you're still not even getting to the problem or the goal that people want to achieve. You just have a lot of sort of barriers. So Domains does a great job of reducing that and thereby more people can just jump in and sort of um, take their research, scholarship, experimentation, like to a whole new level, you know? And there's been a renewed interest in it as well, given the pandemic situation, um, where faculty are now rethinking their assessment and their um, evaluation for their students. And um, thinking about the affordances of the internet in a way that they perhaps didn't previously because they could still just have students submit papers. Um, or, uh, or doing uh, high stakes final exams. And now they're thinking, is this the best way to assess what the students are doing? Are there ways that we can do projects? And in this case, digital projects. And this leads to a discussion with faculty around, you know, yes, you can do that. And we can do that on domains, right? They start to see the limitations of the LMS and saying, well, I want my students to be able to see each other's projects. And we want to be able to comment on each other's projects. And we want to be able to share them a little bit more broadly. Um, we can't do that in an LMS. We want to have, because we are remote, we can invite external guests to comment on the students' work. Um, just, I just worked with, um, uh, a theater and they have a guest, they have an external guest commentator for the student's work and that person can't access the stuff in Canvas. And so now we are setting up, um, in this case, it's a commons blog, but we're setting up a, a space for digital projects for them um, in a way that we wouldn't have previously. Um, and so it's been a really uh, wonderful opportunity to, to talk not only about domains, but talk to faculty about rethinking how they do assessment and rethinking what they ask their students to do. So I've, I've, we've, seen, um, we've seen a little bit of an uptick in organic interest that is um, pushed along by this, this, the, the pandemic and the, the opportunity to, to have to relook at all of the pedagogy, but in particular assessment. Open's just another word for teaching on the web, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, yep. thank you both. This was great. I appreciate you taking the time to share your work at Georgetown. And uh, hopefully I'll be seeing you soon in face-to-face -face at some point after this craziness. <laughs> hopefully. Be nice. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm. Nom, nom, nom.